Why, hello, it's Miss Gina. How are you? I thought we could read Wish Dog. This is Wish Works Inc. and it's chapter 11. And you're with Miss Gina. Hi, I'm Miss Gina. I'm so glad you're here. And you're at Gina's Planet. And so we left off on chapter 11. Uh, if you'll remember, Max made a wish for a dog. He had daydreams about a dog named King that sat beside him at school and protected him. And he wished for this dog. And he got a dog he did not expect. And then he wished the dog um, to go away. And he, he um, now has a dog that came in that he didn't want. And now that dog is missing. And his sister is so sad. And his mother's upset. And the marker. Okay, so we're going to dive right in on chapter 11. So, when mother came home, Polly was in her room crying. Mrs. Chang explained what had happened. Mother took the collar and leash and went out to search for the dog. When she came back, there were frown lines between her eyes. And her mouth was turned down. Her eyes looked red as if she might have been crying, too. She looked the way she used to look a lot of the time in the bad old days before the divorce. Max realized that he hadn't seen her like that a single time since they moved. That thought also made his chest hurt. He reminded himself what a good thing it was that Ratty wasn't here anymore. It didn't help very much. I'm afraid she's really gone, Mother said. We'll put up signs, and we can run an ad. Max helped make signs that said lost dog, and there's the picture of the lost dog. It's got a picture of Ratty. I'm af or Goldie, as Mom named her. I'm afraid she's really gone, Mother said. We'll put up signs and we can run an ad. Max helped make signs that said lost dog. Mother put their phone number and address on the signs. But Max knew nobody would call. And nobody would bring Ratty back. His wish was guaranteed. Mrs. Chang took the signs and a big roll of tape so she could put them up and around the neighborhood on her way home. I miss that little dog already, she said as she left. Mother made macaroni and cheese for supper. Yum. She said they all needed comfort food, even though it was her favorite meal in the world, whole world. Polly hardly ate any. It was Max's favorite, too. I love macaroni, too. Like always, he asked for a second helping. Every night while they ate supper, Polly talked about her friends and her day at school. Not tonight. And Mother didn't ask any questions. The whole meal was very quiet except for Polly's sniffling. She had to keep wiping her nose with her napkin. She's sad. Her doggie is gone. Polly shouldn't be such a baby, Max thought. She wasn't a kindergartner anymore, and besides, Ratty was only a horrible little dog. But sitting there between his sniffling sister and his quiet mother, Max didn't feel like finishing his macaroni and cheese. You know something's wrong when you can't finish your mac and cheese. Did you find it? I just found the word find again. It was in my lap. It's my bookmark. Sometimes I have this and that in my books. <laughs> So, they're all sad, and his sister's crying. So, Polly shouldn't be such a baby, Max thought. She wasn't in kindergartner anymore. And besides, Ratty was only a horrible little dog. But sitting there between his sniffling sister and his quiet mother, Max didn't feel like finishing his macaroni and cheese. He's feeling bad for what he did, wishing Ratty away. Later, when he was helping to clear the table floor, he picked them up and put them in the dishwasher. Ratty didn't need them anymore. Where did 
a dog go when it got wished away, he wondered. She was a real dog when she was with them. Was she still real now? That's a good question. If she was still real, he supposed she still needed to eat. Probably she had found somebody else to feed her, somebody else to jump on the s and scratch when they tried to put her food on the floor. Max hoped she had found somebody, but he felt sorry for whoever she had found. He did his homework at the table without being reminded. He had to copy 10 spelling words and do five easy borrowing and carrying problems. When he was finished, he went to his room. Riley's ball was on his pillow. He pushed it off onto the floor and settled himself on his bed. The ball bounced a couple of times and rolled under his desk. There was no Riley to go under there and get it. There was no Riley to drop it in his lap and then bark and yap at him till he threw it. Good. Ratty wouldn't be there ever again to jump up and snatch balls out of the air. Very good. There was nothing at all to keep him from adventure time now, he thought. That was the best thing of all. It would be the first big adventure he and King had had since Ratty invaded his life. He closed his eyes and got quiet. He's going to go daydream. Imagine himself at the edge of the forest, a big grassy meadow stretching away toward a very high mountain with snow on top. Looks like a bat's coming in. There's the pictures. Let's see. He imagined himself at the edge of the forest, a big grassy meadow stretching away toward a very high mountain with snow on the top. King was there, standing in front of him, wagging his tail. Let's go, Max said, and set off across the meadow. King trotted next to him. Sometimes King would run ahead a little and make a big circle around him, as if checking for danger, and then come panting back, his tongue hanging out. Suddenly, a cloud seemed to pass over the sun. It made a big shadow on the grass. Max looked up. It was no cloud. A huge, dark shape with wings, like a bat, was swooping down at him. It was too big to be a bat or a bird and too nearly round to be a dragon. It was hard to see clearly against the brightness of the sky. Whatever it was, it wasn't friendly. King had gone running ahead. Max pulled his heavy nightstick out of his belt. To me, King, he shouted, and King came hurrying back. And that's him telling King, to me, King. There he comes. A few more pages. The shape swooped closer, and Max saw that it was a bat after all, a huge, gigantic, monstrous, hairy bat with sharp yellow teeth and glowing red eyes. It was coming directly at him. Max raised the nightstick above his head as the bat swerved to avoid it. King leaped into the air and sank his teeth into one of its wings. The bat screamed a horrible scream and began falling out of the sky, falling with the bat. King growled deep in his throat and bravely kept his jaws clamped tightly onto the wing. The bat flailed hard with his other wing but could not get loose. It could not get back into the air. When it flopped under the ground, King still holding onto its wing landed gracefully on all four feet. Max hit the bat as hard as he could with the nightstick. The bat began to shrink, melting into the grass until it was nothing left, until there was nothing left of it but a sticky, dark puddle. Thanks, King, Max said. Together we have freed this world from a terrible scourge. 
Max liked the word scourge. He used it as often as he could. He used it in his adventures. He patted King on the head, and King wagged his tail and licked his hand. He didn't jump up on Max and slather Max's face with slimy, smelly spit. He just licked his hand in a friendly, loyal way. Now this is the way a dog ought to behave, Max thought. He opened his eyes and imagined King lying quietly next to him on his bed. We'll have another adventure tomorrow, Max promised. Maybe tomorrow, he thought, they'd run into a troll, a huge, gigantic mountain troll. When he had put on his pajamas and brushed his teeth, Max went out into the living room to tell his mother good night. She was sitting in her front chair with a book in her lap, but she wasn't reading. She was staring out the window at the street light. I don't have Goldie to walk tonight, she said, not even turning to look at him. Her voice had a weird sort of trembly sound. I hope someone has found her. I hope whoever it is will see our signs and bring her back to us. Maybe. Max said. Mother turned to him now. I'm really sorry Polly lost your dog, she said. It wasn't Polly's fault, he answered. Mother didn't understand how completely true that was. Back in his bed, Max pulled his quilt up to his chin. Didn't Mother and Polly see that they were all better off without Ratty? It might take a few days, he thought, but they'd get over this. Alibaba probably already had. <laughs> the cat's probably glad. Alibaba was probably as happy as Max was that Ratty was gone. He didn't have to run and hide under the couch anymore. Max had left his bedroom door open a little so Alibaba could come back and sleep on his bed again. He would very much like having Ollie Baba on his bed again, he thought, even if sometimes he stuck a claw in Max's foot. I'm going to stay nice and cozy and warm all night, Max told himself as he closed his eyes and snuggled into his pillow. No rat dog would pull his quilt off, leave him shivering. He could sleep later in the morning because he didn't have to walk ratty before breakfast. He wouldn't have to apologize for her barking or jumping or worry about her stealing sausages. There were very, very good things. These were very good things, he thought. They were exactly what he had wanted. Exactly. There's the words. And we're on page 99. So when we turn the page, we'll be at What's next? 100. That's right. Something was different. Chapter 12. That'll be tomorrow. We'll read chapter 12 tomorrow. All right. So I'm glad you came back to listen. I hope you enjoyed that story. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.